All right. Good evening. If you'll grab a Bible, we will be going all over Scripture tonight. We'll be looking at a couple different things. Some different things that are inescapable, unavoidable, and immutable. Things that are uh, we cannot escape. Things that we cannot avoid and things we cannot change about God. This is exactly what, what Jonah tried to do. He tried to run from God, but God is inescapable. Psalm, uh, the, the psalmist will talk about how he, he can go anywhere and God is still there. there. There are certain things about God. There are certain things about life that are unavoidable, that are inescapable, and that are immutable. They cannot be avoided. They cannot be escaped, and they cannot be changed. There are some things in life that simply cannot be avoided, like taxes. Um, every, every, every year they come around, you cannot avoid taxes. And there are some different things about Scripture that we cannot avoid. There, there, are, there are some things that, that all people must do, that all people, that, that are inescapable for every single person. But there are some ways in which we can make decisions and make choices that determine the circumstances surrounding these unavoidable things. Some of these uh, uh, unavoidable things are going to show up. They're going to come about in Scripture. And we're going to look at four things. I won't, it's going to be a short lesson. You know, J, uh, J, Jason talked about preaching until morning. Uh, but have no fear. It will be a relatively short lesson. We cannot escape some things. We cannot avoid some things. We cannot change some things. So let's examine these things. The first is all will confess Jesus is Lord. Every single person will confess Jesus is Lord. It is inescapable. It is unavoidable. And it will not change no matter what we do. Turn with me to Philippians 2. Philippians 2. We'll read... Philippians 2, 5, uh, continuing all the way down to 11. This is talking about Jesus. Have this mind among yourself, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. But, but Jesus emptied himself by taking the form of a bondservant, being born in the likeness of men. Being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore... God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. So that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. What Paul is saying is Jesus was this man of God. He was God and he was God incarnate. He is worthy of being glorified. He is worthy of confessing his divinity, confessing that he is Lord. And what it says there is that every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord. This, is, this sentiment is echoed in Romans chapter 10. Romans 10, uh, verses 9 and 10, is, it continues to say, Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with, one heart, with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. 1 Timothy 6 will talk about the confession that, that you have made. Every person should confess. Every person should do that. Everyone should recognize Jesus as Lord today. But Paul will say in Romans 14, Paul will say in Romans 14 that this is an inescapable fact. Everyone should do it today, but everyone shall do it on the day of judgment. Re uh, Re Romans 14 and verse 10, it says, why do you pass judgment on your brother? Or why do you despise your brother? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue confess to God. The difference there is that we are called and we should confess Jesus as Lord. But the reality is that's inescapable. In the future, if you have not done it already, you will proclaim that Jesus is Lord. Either today or in the day of judgment. 
All men should confess Christ now, but if they choose not to, they all will confess him in the life to come. Point number two, all men everywhere, every single person will be baptized. Will be baptized. Now, this might be a a strange thought to some, but let's turn to Mark 16. Mark 16 at the end there, it's, uh, this is the, the end of Mark. Mark 16, verses 15 and 16, read this. And he said to them, this is Jesus, Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, and whoever does not believe will be condemned. This is a baptism in water, an immersion in water, and you will be saved. There are times when, when Jesus, uh, it brings up, different times when, when uh, people come to Jesus and they say, Lord, Lord, haven't we done all of these great things? But Jesus says, I never knew you. You would practice lawlessness. You never obeyed. Matthew verse 3, if you are baptized in water, you shall be saved. But Matthew chapter 3, again, continuing this theme of baptism. Matthew 3 and verse 11, this is John the Baptist. He says, I baptize with water for repentance, but he who is coming after me is greater than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear the threshing floor, gather the wheat into the barn, but the chaff will be burned with an unquenchable fire. The chaff will be burned in an unquenchable fire. Acts chapter 20, or uh, not Acts, Revelation 20, rather. Revelation 20, verse 15 says that if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. All will be baptized. Baptized by water or baptized by fire. All will be immersed into water for the salvation and forgiveness of their sins, or they will be baptized into fire for an eternity of death, immersed in hell. All will be baptized. Again, everyone will be baptized, but we've been given the privilege to choose the element. Water or fire. Point number three. All will be resurrected. All men everywhere will be resurrected. Let's look at 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians is a great chapter talking about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It talks about in the beginning about how important it is that he was raised from the dead. But it will shift and will pivot in verse 20. It will say, but in fact Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits. He is the forerunner, the first fruits, the first one of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death... By a man has also come the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ shall all be made alive. Every single person you've ever met will be resurrected. It is inescapable. It is unavoidable. We as humans will live forever. Now, the description of live is going to be different depending on where we end up, either to a uh, two different kinds of resurrection. We'll read that in John. John chapter 5 talks about this exact same principle. John 5, 28. He says, do not marvel at this at an hour, or for an hour is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and come out those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. It is an inescapable fact that once a person is born, they will live forever. One of those inescapable facts, if, if you know, we, we can include the, the re- judgment day coming, is death. Everyone is going to die. We will pass away. Our bodies will deteriorate But it is also an immutable fact, an inescapable fact, an unavoidable fact that we will be raised again. There will be a resurrection. Our spirit body will continue to live on forever. But there are two resurrections. A resurrection of life 
or a resurrection of judgment. All men everywhere, every single person who's ever lived, will be resurrected. The saint or sinner, good or evil, we'll all be resurrected, but we have the right to choose the destiny of our resurrection. Point number four, all men everywhere shall be judged. All men everywhere will be judged. Acts 17. Acts 17 is, is a, a part of the, the sermon that Paul is giving. Um, Paul uh, addresses the Areopagus, and he is standing in the midst of that preaching. Uh, and that, you find that in verse 22. If you skip down to verse 30, Paul is preaching, and he says this, The times of ignorance God has overlooked, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he appointed and on and because of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead and so he says there will be a day of judgment there will be a day in which he will judge the world, and he's going to judge the world based on one man, based on one man, Jesus Christ. Based on Jesus, all shall be judged. Every single person, all men everywhere, are called to repentance because all men everywhere will be judged. Flip back again to Revelation. Revelation 20, we read verse 15, but let's read the context of that. Uh, Revelation 15. 20 in verse 11. Then I saw a great white throne, and he who was seated on it. For his presence, from his presence, earth and sky fled away, and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Then another book was opened, which was the book of life. And the dead were judged by what is written in those books according to what they had done. And the sea gave up the dead who were in it. Death and Hades gave up the dead who were in them, and they were judged, each one of them, according to what they had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Not only is everyone going to be resurrected, but everyone is going to be judged. We will have an eternal life, but there will also be a winnowing fork, as we read about in uh, Matthew 3, that will separate those who are resurrected towards life or resurrected for judgment, for eternal condemnation. There will be a judgment. All men everywhere will be judged. One of the things that we've been studying in, in John, and we're going to hopefully make it to this, uh, this verse this Wednesday. If you've been following along with us, we're in John chapter 12. But at the end of John 12, in verse 48, we've referenced this verse many times. There is going to be a judgment. And John 12, verse 48 says, The one who rejects me and does not receive my words, this is Jesus speaking, has a judge. The word that I have spoken will judge him on the last day. And so there is going to be judgment. And here we have the basis on which we are all going to be judged. We're all going to be judged based on the words that Jesus spoke. The words that Jesus spoke. And so these things are immutable. That means they're not going to change. It doesn't matter what we do. The, the fact that we are going to confess Jesus as Lord is never going to change. It's either going to happen today or in the day of judgment. We will all be baptized. That will not change. It is unavoidable. We cannot avoid the fact that we will either be baptized in water or we'll be baptized in fire. All are going to be resurrected. All will be judged. Some things in life are inescapable, unavoidable, and immutable. But the simple fact that we can choose our eternal destiny, we can choose our eternal destiny, we can choose when we confess Jesus as Lord, we can choose when we are baptized, we can choose which resurrection we will be resurrected unto, and we can choose how we shall be judged. 
judged based on the, the mercy and grace of God through the death and sacrifice of Jesus Christ or through our own merit and our own means. We all have the privilege to choose whether Jesus will be our justifier or the one who condemns us, our judge or our justifier. So, the question is this, what, what things are we doing? In spite of all of these different things that are going to come to pass, what preparations have we made? How are we living? If anyone would need to confess Jesus is Lord, if anyone would need to be baptized, if, if anyone would need to, to choose to respond and, and become a member of the body that will be resurrected to the resurrection of life, or if you would like Jesus to be the one who justifies you, the one who, who pays for your sins, who pays for your debt, and ultimately pays the price, or if you just need help doing that, living for Jesus, living for his kingdom, would you come as we stand and sing?